Link TV, connecting you to the world. Link TV is viewer supported. Watch more at linktv.org. Today on Earth Focus, former Environmental Protection Agency Administrator Bill Riley on how to meet the challenge of the world's growing demand for fresh water. Coming up on Earth Focus. Bill Riley has had a distinguished career both inside and outside of government. He was administrator of the Environmental Protection Agency under President George H.W. Bush. He also served as president of the World Wildlife Fund and as a founder and advisor of several business ventures. In 2010, he was appointed by President Barack Obama as co-chair of the National Commission on the BP Deepwater Horizon oil spill and offshore drilling to investigate the oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. Bill Riley speaks with Earth Focus correspondent Miles Benson on how we can meet the world's water challenge. Bill Riley, access to safe water is a big, big world problem. How is the U.S. responding? I think for a long period, ever since international development became a focus of our government back in the late 60s, 1970s, for most of that time, there was a strong conviction in the field of economic development that the key determinants of economic takeoff for developing countries were energy, communications, and transport. Water and sanitation never really figured. It didn't figure because they thought, well, those are secondary issues. They don't really affect economic growth and development directly, and we'll get to them as, as economic development occurs. Failing to take account of the extraordinary impact on simple human energy and productivity that is the consequence of uh, diarrheal diseases, for example, of the fact that uh, even as late as the 1990s, almost half the deaths in the relatively advanced developing country city of Bangkok were from, from waterborne diseases. And you know, that is the reality for a large portion of the world, particularly that does not uh, have effective sanitation. The community in Mexico uh, changed overnight, according to a physician friend of mine who used to go there once a year to treat diseases. All of a sudden, he wasn't seeing the gastrointestinal illness and the other waterborne disease. Illness. No one knew quite why, and it turned out it was a simple matter. The village upstream had suddenly gotten some wastewater treatment. Well, obviously, that's fundamentally connected with economic development, and it's impressive that now there is a sense increasingly in the Congress on a bipartisan basis, uh, certainly in the administration where Secretary Clinton is driving cases, the intersection the between water and sanitation issues and support and economic development as a, as a primary focus of our foreign policy, that that's changed. And water and sanitation are finally beginning to acquire the priority in our governments, in our aid agencies, that I think they have long deserved. What's the most perplexing aspect of dealing with the problem? The public perception in, on uh, these issues it doesn't it, it, it isn't anything like where it should be, given the universality of the problem, particularly in the developing world. One would expect that uh, developing country governments, and I remember once uh, several ministers told me that we were concerned with middle class enthusiasms in our aid programs and many of the things we were doing, whereas the problems that were causing deaths uh, in their countries and in, in shortening lives were almost all related to water. Well, even the countries where that is true and where the ministers may get it, it's not been reflected in the policies and it's not been reflected in the, in the financial priorities. I think it's a little bit of a lag that uh, money has gone for harder things, infrastructure, for example, things that are more, more visible maybe and uh, thought to be more, uh, have more premium in terms of, of uh, recognition. What are the solutions to the problem? It's remarkable how well certain old civilizations, 2,000-year-old civilizations, Sri Lanka is a good example, dealt with the intermittency of rainfall and the fact that you only get it a couple of months of the year and you'd better husband it when you do, and they did. And they had catchment programs and they had uh, conservation efforts and very efficient irrigation systems. We are increasingly sensitive to that, I think, uh, as a culture and people around the world. There still are are serious problems in a place like India where the groundwater is dropping uh, 10 to 15 feet a year in several of the states, um, there is free electricity for the farmers to draw that water up. So it's basically cost free to do that. 
increasingly drip irrigation, micro irrigation is getting support from the government at the same time. And that's beginning to improve the efficiency of water delivery, delivering the nutrients for the, for the crops as well as the water. Um, but frankly, governments that do provide free electricity, and it's very common, it's been true in Mexico, Saudi Arabia, India, many other countries, it's been true in the United States to some degree, uh, do no favor to the conservation of water. We really need to have programs that incentivize efficient use. Bill Riley, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Link TV is the only U.S. network dedicated to global and national news, uncompromising documentaries, and diverse cultural programs. Programs which connect you to the world. To learn more, visit linktv.org.